Hey everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 5.1, we're going to talk gases, 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 ideal gases, regular gases, factors of gases, 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 gases. So, some factors affecting gases. One is temperature, okay? Now temperature, the important thing here is no difference between temperature and heat. Temperature is the average kinetic energy of an object. So, um... That means the mass is irrelevant. Heat is the total kinetic energy of an object, so mass matters. So a drop of boiling water is 100 degrees Celsius. That means it has a high temperature. But because it's only a drop of it, it has low heat. Um, the ocean in the North Sea is 2 degrees Fahrenheit. That's cold, so that has a low temperature, and it has a high heat because it's so massive. Okay, so I like to think of heat as how much ice it can melt. So if it has a lot of heat, it can melt a lot of ice. A drop of boiling water can even melt a whole ice cube. So that's a decent way of thinking of it. Boltzmann distribution is a new focus of the AP exam, meaning your tests too. Um, Boltzmann distribution tends to have two curves. It doesn't have to, but it tends to have two curves. This is temperature one, doink. This is temperature two, doink. This is the cold one. And you can tell the temperature of the thing by dropping a line down from the peak. The peak of this one is right here. So this is the cold one. This is the hot one. EA we'll talk about later, so don't need to worry about it. But other things to notice is that um, both have hot particles. Notice portion of collisions with representative hot particles. And both have cold particles. This is increasing energy, so this over here is hot. This over here is cold. And notice there is a range, sorry, range of energies. It's not, they're not all the same. So which is hotter, a higher peaked or a lower peaked graph? Now it's a lower peak. Now it's not that it's a lower peak. It's hotter because more particles have higher energy. That's an up arrow or Okay. which is a hotter peak, a peak on the left or a peak on the right. So the hotter peak is the heat peak on the right. A graph with more heat would be different than a graph with less heat in which way, assuming the same temperature. So remember, heat is the total. So what would happen would be the peaks would be higher throughout the whole thing. Okay, So the peaks would be higher. Now this one says portion. Whoops. This is portion. Typically, it's the total number. So watch that axis so this question may change. Temperature is independent of state, not Alabama compared to Illinois. <laughs> a gas at 225K has the same average kinetic energy as a solid at 225K. Notice, average kinetic energy is temperature. Okay. How do particles move again? What do these do? These do the Harlem shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. These roll. And these shoot in rapid, random, straight line motion. So you should be able to describe that. Now, these are condensed. Look at how close they are. And these are mostly empty space. Okay. Converting temperature. We only use Kelvins. Kelvins are the only great unit. Okay. Celsius plus 273 equals Kelvin. And don't ever use the Fahrenheit word. You don't need to know how to convert from it um, ever. You really, really, really won't. All you need to do is know Celsius plus 273 equals Kelvin. And vice versa. Absolute zero is where all motion ceases. So the volume of a gas would be zero. Remember when we talked about particles um, not moving? If they weren't moving, they would all be collapsing into each other. And the volume of a gas would be zero. So we say it is a theoretical number. We have never reached absolute zero. Pressure. 
is units are kilopascals, or our atmospheres. Kilopascals is the metric one. But for some strange reason, atmosphere is used a lot. Pressure equals force over area. So this would be the thing where if you step on a bunch of nails, oh look, here's me drawing a foot, barefoot. Oh, I don't know how to make it look barefoot. Yeah, there's a toe, I guess. Um, it doesn't hurt as bad as if you step on one nail. Ouch! Right? Pressure is the focus of gas math problems. And just to give you an idea of it, if you think of prisoners in a 10 by 10 cell, so here's the cell of a prisoner. If I put two prisoners in there, they're awfully close. And what do they do? Well, they do what prisoners do, which is fight each other. Uh, now, if you put 10 prisoners in there, you know there's going to be fights, right? Well, maybe you don't know because you haven't been to jail, but maybe you know people that have been because that's always fun. Take away cable TV, even more pressure. Ah! And then if you put them in a bigger yard, that's why they let them out every once in a while, in a 100 by 100 yard, um, then there's less fights. Okay. Another unit of pressure is millimeters of mercury. Now, you do need to eventually know these numbers. One atmosphere equals 101.3 kilopascals, one atmosphere equals 760 millimeters of mercury, and one atmosphere equals 760 tor. The English unit of pressure is PSI, pounds per square each we, inch. We will never use it, but it's good for you to know what's used in America. Measuring pressure. The way a barometer works is the outside air pressure pushes down on this. Notice this is a vacuum, right? So if it pushes really hard, it will push the mercury up a certain level. Now, if this is a low force, then it will only go up this high. If it's a high force, it might fill up all the way up to the top. Okay, so this part right here is open to the air. Pressure flows from high to low. Don't shoot a gun in an airplane because in an airplane, way up high, here's a house, way up high, way up high this has low pressure. But we have high pressure to make us comfortable in the cabin. So if you shoot a gun in an airplane, Oh, well, I don't know what that is. There's a bullet. What happens is all the air goes rushing out, and you don't have the air thick enough for you to breathe. And Top Gun and stuff, the fighter pilots um, are always wearing gas masks, and that's to increase the air pressure so that they get enough oxygen in there. Standard temperature pressure, this is a reference point. Again, one atmosphere equals 101.3 kilopascals, and zero degrees Celsius equals 273. And those are the conditions. These are our reference conditions. One atmosphere is 101.3 kilopascals, zero degrees Celsius is 273 kelvins. Volume is in liters. That's the unit we use in most cases. A rigid steel container means you can't change the volume. Balloons do change volume. My birthday's in December. So little Mr. Folly would go to the store and inside the store, get a giant balloon that says, Happy Birthday, Mr. Volley! Woo! And then he'd go out the door. And when I went outside, little Mr. Folly's balloon was sad. And Mr. Folly was even more sad. And then when I got home, and got back in the house, what happened but my balloon got to be enormous again. That's because of the change in temperature, right? So out here it's hot, and out here it's cold, and out here it's hot. So the temperatures can change volume. Moles of gas, this tells us the number of particles. So moles, remember, is the number of particles. More particles would do what to pressure? So if I have more particles, remember, pressure is basically the force of particles hitting a wall. So if there's more particles, there's more force. So more particles will do what to pressure? Increase it. What would it do to the volume of a balloon? Well, if there's more force pushing the balloon out, it would increase it. What would it do to the volume of a metal cylinder? Nothing. Or explode. But in AP chemistry, it would do nothing. Okay? In the army, that's how a grenade works. I throw a grenade for you. That's the song you should play. 
Moles effect on temperature. Let's not throw a grenade for you. That's kind of wrong. But moles effect on temperature. Remember, this is the number of particles. Do hot or cold particles move faster? Hot particles move faster. So do hot or cold particles leave faster? Hot particles leave faster because they move faster, right? Why does spraying an aerosol can make the can colder? The hottest particles leave. And that is a really cool experiment to do. Um, take a can of compressed air or anything that's in a can. Spree squeeze a little trigger. The can will get cold. And that's basically how uh, your refrigerator works as well. Kinetic molecular theory, this is our best description of how gases work. Description of gases at a molecular level. What we think gases pretty much are like. They are point masses. That means when I draw a gas particle in here, the volume of that is a point mass that is the volume of a point. So the particles have no volume. However, they do have volume as a group. Okay. Guests are in rapid random straight line motion. Hey, that's true. By the way, these are not really point masses, but they're close. All collisions are perfectly elastic. No, that's not true. But it's close. Particles are not attracted to each other. That's not true either. But it's close. So even those things have frowns, that's what we assume. And why do we assume those things? Because it gets us really, really, really close to the right answer and makes life, life easy. K of T is an estimation. It, by the way, is a great estimation. When is the estimation the closest? Also known as when is the gas most ideal? When is a, oh, I changed this. This makes me so sad. When is a date most ideal? Okay. So when is a date most ideal? Apparently I didn't say when I thought I did. The ideal gas is like an ideal date. So these are when these things are most ideal. They're hot. So hot particles move fast, right? You want your ideal date to be hot. So going fast, hot particles move faster, reduces attraction and reduces the loss of elasticity. Also, they're not a freshman. So if I'm a particle here, and this particle right here is moving at a million miles an hour, zoom, the attraction's going to be very, 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 very weak. So let's say somebody, we won't say who, is trolling the South Campus weight room for a prom date or homecoming date. But as they're trolling, they're in a car going 900 or 90 miles per hour. Well, they don't have time to actually talk to the freshman to pick up a date because they're going too fast. That will reduce the attraction. Remember, that's one of the things we're trying to do. Also, if particles going really, 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 really fast, it actually becomes more elastic. So when it hits a freshman, that freshman will bounce with perfect elasticity. An ideal gas is small, so you can pick her up and look strong, which is not the real reason why. An ideal gas is small because there's more space between particles. So again, if I have a particle here and a particle way over here, the attraction is going to be weaker than a particle here, this is particle A, this is particle B, and particle C, if they're close together, the attraction has a much better chance of working. Okay, H2 is more ideal than H2O because it's smaller. Also not a freshman. An ideal gas is unattractive. Now, remember the hot thing said it was attractive, but unattractive, no annoying friends. Okay, so Every girl thinks that their friends are, oh, she's so sweet and interesting and funny. And all the guys know they're not. And all the guys think, oh, my friend is funny, he's hysterical, and really he's just kind of disgusting and annoying. So your friends are dumb and annoying, guys, and your friends are just rambling things that no one wants to talk to girls. So that's just kind of where it goes. So H2O is H-bonded. That's very attractive. So it is less ideal than NO, which is not H-bonded. So... An ideal gas has a big old house, which means it has a big volume. So what it means to have a big volume is the particles will not be attracted to each other because there's such a big space. So in Oprah's mansion, particle A could live over here, and particle B could live over here, and they're not attracted to each other because they never interact. This reduces the collisions, which reduces attractions. Uh, well, it reduces collisions, so that reduces the effect of inelasticity, and it reduces the attractions. An ideal gas is low pressure. 
You can do whatever you want, like wear a satchel. Um, low pressure usually comes from big volume or a few moles. Okay, So low pressure comes from a big volume, meaning that the particles aren't close to each other, or a few moles, which means the particles that are there aren't very close to each other. There's fewer collisions, which re reduce that inelasticity thing, and fewer attractions, which is what we're focusing on. An ideal woman should say date. Sorry. Ideal date never changes. Like a vampire. It never liquefies or solidifies. So remember, ideal gas, a real gas can turn into a liquid or a solid. But an ideal date never liquefies or solidifies or moves on to North Campus. <laughs> Answer to all deviation questions. So the question would be, which deviates from ideality the most? Substance X or substance Y. And you're going to talk about attractions or reducing attractions. Or you're going to talk about volumes or reducing volumes. And that's it. Okay. So this thing, assuming I have gas particles in here, this would be most ideal for the gas particles inside. Why? Because there's bigger space. And this would be less ideal. Why? Because they're big magnets that are strong. An ideal podcast is shorter than this and has an eagle tattoo. Toodles, or I should say, tattoodles. <laughs> tattoodles. <laughs>